All right, in an earlier uh, video, you may, have, you may remember that we calculated the force between the moon and the earth and the force between the sun and the earth. And here I have those numbers up here. Um, and you can see that the force between the sun and the earth was 179 times the force between the moon and the earth. And yet, the tidal forces are ca primarily caused by the moon rather than by the sun, even though the force of attraction between the moon and the earth is far less than the force of attraction be between the sun and the earth. And you may wonder, well, why is that? Well, it turns out that the, the tidal forces are not dependent on the force between the planet, the Earth and the Moon, uh, but it's, it's dependent on the, on the rate of change of the force with distance. So how quickly does the force change as you go from a point on the surface of the Earth to the point further in the Earth? And that is dfdr. So let's calculate the dfdr of the universal equation of gravity. So if f is equal to g times m big M over r squared, and we're going to rewrite that so we can take the derivative more easily, this can then be written as g times little m big M times r to the negative 2 power. And now we're going to take the derivative of that. So the df dr is therefore equal to, take the exponent, minus 2 times g little m big M times r to the exponent minus 1, which is minus 3. And then rewrite that equation. We can then say that the df dr is equal to minus 2gm big M over r cubed. So you can see that the rate of change of the force with respect to distance is dependent upon 1 over the radius cubed. And since the sun is very far away from the earth and radius cubed then becomes a really big number, you can see that the dfdr for the sun may be smaller than the dfdr for the moon. Let's find out. So let's calculate the dfdr for the moon. And of course that's going to be minus 2 times g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons per meter squared. Multiply times the mass of the, the moon, so it would be... Um, 7.26, no, it's 7.36. Almost forgot what that was. 7.36 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. And then the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And divide that whole thing by the distance between the Moon and the Earth, and that was 385,000 kilometers, so 385 million meters. And now we have to cube that number. And let's see what that is. Here's my calculator. Okay, so 2 times 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 7.36 e to the 22 times 5.98 e to the 24 divided by 385 e to the 6th cubed equals... And then we have to just, of course, put a minus in front of that. And that gives us minus 1.03 times 10 to the 12th newtons per meter. So that would be the change of the force per distance, so that will be newtons per meter. So that is the rate of change of the force with respect to distance, I shouldn't say rate of change because rate typically is associated with time, but the change of the force with respect to distance is minus 10 to the 12 newtons per meter. That means every meter that you move farther away from the moon, uh, the force would be less by that much. All right, now let's go ahead and do it for the sun. So the df dr for the sun is equal to minus 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons per meter squared. The mass of the Earth, which is a small mass in this case, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The mass of the Sun, 2.0 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. And then the average distance between the Earth and the Sun, roughly 149 million kilometers, or 149,500. So that's kilometers and then that another three zeros makes it into meters and we can cube that. All right, let's see what that number is. So 2 times 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24 times 2 e to the 30th divided by 149.5 e to the 9th cubed equals and that number is minus, don't forget the minus, 
4.77 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons per meter. Not minus, but it's actually plus 11 to the 11. So notice that the change of the force with respect to distance for the sun is smaller than it is for the moon. And that's the key as to why the moon has a, a stronger influence on the tidal forces compared to the sun. Matter of fact, the ratio here, it's about uh, 10.3 divided by 4.77, so 10.3 divided by 4.77 equals the ratio is 2.16. So for the moon, it's 2.16 times as large as it is for the sun, which, in other words, the effect of the moon on the tide is about 2.16 times as strong for the moon, uh, caused by the moon, as, as opposed to caused by the sun. And that's why the, tide of, the tidals are the way they are on the earth, or the tidal forces are the way they are on the earth. Kind of interesting. That's how that works.